What's going on guys, Matt Schaefer back here with another Mosaic Audiophile build for you. This one is a Hi-Fi 2 in a brand new Mercedes GLE 53 AMG, so let's go ahead and check it out. Since I always hit you with the beautiful stuff first, we're going to take a look at what is in the trunk. All right, so this is the subwoofer enclosure. Obviously, this is going to be the main aesthetics of what we added to the car. The system that we did for this client, we kept it incredibly simple. Um, obviously, if you know by now, anytime we ever build a car, we build it for the expectations and budget of each client. So this client essentially asked for a subwoofer enclosure that was very aesthetically pleasing, something with a lot of lights that he can kind of show off to friends and show off at cars and coffee. In order to add subs to a car the correct way, uh, you pretty much have to add a DSP to the car. That way you can properly adjust the time, EQ, and phase of the subwoofers so they can be in phase with the front and mid bass. Um, if you're using just like a simple line out converter, obviously you're just retaining the same signal that is already present and you cannot manipulate, you know, time, phase, EQ, things like that. Um, so essentially what we ended up doing is we added a up 10 match DSP and that is here behind this panel. I can overlay some pictures. Factory amplifier comes out. We mounted the match up 10, the Helix P1, which is powering the two Focal Utopia M subwoofers here. Um, and then we have a Mobridge interface. So essentially factory amp comes out. Mobridge interface goes in place, works perfectly with the, the coax data that was coming from the car. So essentially the Mobridge interface is giving us a perfect digital signal from the front radio. The nav, the chimes, all of that stuff is perfectly summed in to give us a digital toslink output that goes into our match up 10 DSP. So again, all of that stuff is completely hidden here behind the panel and uh, everything's tucked away, you don't see anything. Still have access here to the underneath of the floor. Still have access to everything back here. Obviously this enclosure is only about, I would say eight or nine inches deep. So you still have a lot of trunk space here, as you can see. <coughs> the top panel still works and articulates out. Top panel comes out if I can get it here so top panel out you can see the top of the enclosure we finished off with Alcantara suede um, the front of the enclosure is matching leather and of course you can see the different layers of acrylic here if you look very close it's actually brushed aluminum is the first layer that matches the dash of this car and then on top of that we have a lit edge lit acrylic. Obviously all the lines that you see here, this is back rastered with the laser to engrave it. And the, the edge lighting is lighting up each one of those marks. This design around the sub is complementary of the factory grills and I can show you that. So when you're looking at the factory grill, if you're looking at this as the subwoofer, this pattern here is exactly what you're seeing around the subwoofer, right? So that's kind of the concept that I came up with. So you can see around that subwoofer, you have that same pattern that you see there on the Burmeister grill. It's a little tough to see here during the day, but this Mercedes logo in the center is actually lit up. It just kind of looks white right now, but that is a lit piece of acrylic too. These are just, these get so bright that it kind of takes away from that, but you can see definitely at night that that is lit up and I can overlay some video here to kind of show you the effect this has at night. The lights only come on when the trunk opens. So essentially while you're driving, these lights are off. There's nothing reflecting on the back glass to distract you from driving. But yeah, lastly, we have this fiber edge lit here that right now matches the interior fiber lighting. So on the doors, on the dash, you have the same fiber optic light that's running on the dash connecting the doors to create that body line throughout the interior. So we really tried to note each individual lighting element from the car and then obviously bought, brought the Burmeister design into the subwoofer design so everything 
fits and looks together like it is some sort of an OEM subwoofer enclosure. Obviously matching Alcantara, again, matching leather. And uh, yeah, that's really the full makeup of the enclosure and how the DSP and simple subamp are working. And we'll take you on to the inside. So in this car, everything remains exactly the same. There is no upgraded speakers. Uh, in this case, the budget for this job really solely took care of the subwoofer enclosure in the back. Also took care of just adding the DSP amp and the amplifier for the subwoofer. We amplified the factory Burmeister speakers in this case. Obviously he can always upgrade in the future from there, but all the pieces are in place to maximize the performance of the subwoofers, right? Cause the worst thing that you can do is not get the full return on your investment. You add the subs, you're using a simple line out converter hooked up to a factory signal that is tuned for whatever driver that that speaker is hooked up to. Um, yeah, there is bass restoration and things like that in like an LC2i, but that's just adding some lower frequencies that may not be there, right? It's not adjusting the EQ to perfect the frequency response of the listening position based on how the subs are mounted in the car, the enclosure that they're in. Um, also, you don't have any adjustments with phasing or time. Um, so to maximize that, obviously having that run through a DSP with the rest of the speakers. You know, in this case, I mean, you're sitting in here, you'd be shocked that you're listening to factory speakers. You do get a lot more performance out of the factory speakers in this case, but obviously you're not reaching the full potential of what the UP10 DSP can do uh, based on the speakers that are hooked up to it. So obviously does this sound better, more clear, be a lot more dynamic than factory because you are adding more power, but it is a good compromise for this client based on his needs, wants, and budget. So pretty simple. Again, didn't have to adjust any of the speakers. They're all there. They're all tuned accordingly. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the full scope of this job. If you are interested in getting any work done by us, uh, you can contact me. Here's my phone number followed by my email address. These are definitely the two best points of contact. Obviously, if this is the first video you're seeing of ours on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that alert bell, uh, notifying you anytime we drop a new video. So go ahead and get that done. Also, if you wanna see our full catalog of work, obviously you can look through our YouTube videos um, as well as our website, mosaicdesign.com. This is gonna be a good place that's gonna have our full catalog of work in an easy to navigate area. You can search by make, manufacture, different job type and of course all the youtube videos and build log pictures are linked to each album so go ahead and check that out obviously follow us on tiktok you get to see some of the behind the scenes builds before they're released to youtube sometimes it takes me a month or two maybe longer based on how busy i am to get these videos uploaded to youtube so if you want to see the the latest stuff coming out of the shop make sure you follow our tiktok make sure you follow our instagram here's our three handles below and then finally, if you are a audio enthusiast, my key demographic is people who pretty much dabbled in audio, maybe 80s, 90s, early 2000s, they got out of it. They have an awesome car that they have now today and they kind of want to rekindle that old passion that they had for audio. Maybe they're trying to re-educate themselves on what makes audio great in 2023, much like I was just stating with what we had to do with this client, adding the Match Up 10 DSP to get the best performance out of the subwoofers that he's installing in the car, right? So we kind of, so we explain some of this stuff on our podcast in different episodes. There's always different topic, different guests. So go ahead and check that out. It's called the Old Fashioned Podcast, streaming now on Spotify or anywhere you get podcast. And like always, guys, I appreciate the feedback. Thanks for following. Can't wait to see what you have in store for me this year. And I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.